Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and we were discussing chapter 16 of Indian Penal Code which is all about offenses against human body. In this series, we were discussing the aspects of force, criminal force and assault and in my previous video, I have already covered five first sections that is starting from section 349 to 353. Here, I am going to discuss the five remaining sections starting from section 354 to 358. Here, one of the most important section is section 354 which discusses about outraging the modesty of women and there we are getting this 2013 amendment where I am going to discuss about four other sections which are being added under section 354. That way, this is a very very important video as far as the outraging of the modesty of women is concerned. Along with that, I am also going to discuss the three other sections. While I discuss about the outraging the modesty of women, I also have three important case law. So to discuss all of them, let's get into the first slide. This is a repetition slide. I'm not going to spend any time on this because we have already understood in my previous video what is force, what is criminal force and what is assault. And to continue this video, to know the meaning of all these three terms is very, very important. So if you have not gone through my previous video, you must go through that video to understand this video very clearly. With that, I'm taking you to the first slide of this particular presentation. Section 354 discusses about assault or criminal force to woman with intent to outrage her modesty. Now, if anybody commits assault or uses criminal force to a woman, intentionally or knowingly that it is going to cause outrage of her modesty in that case it is a punishable offense and the punishment here is very interesting it is minimum of one year imprisonment which can go up to five years so that is a very important point you need to observe there is minimum one year imprisonment available and it can go up to five years based on case to case and that is along with fine and here the offenses are cognizable offenses non-bailable offenses, any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non-compoundable offenses. And with the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013, four more sections are added under Section 354, that is Section 354 A, B, C and D. Section 354 A discusses about sexual harassment and punishment for sexual harassment. Section 354 B discusses about assault or use of criminal force to women with intent to disrobe and section 354 C discusses about voyeurism and section 354 D discusses about stalking and I am going to explain all of them in my further slides and then we will discuss the case laws. As I have already told section 354 A discusses about sexual harassment and punishment for sexual harassment. Now subsection 1 of this particular section discusses about what are all is considered as sexual harassment. There are four such acts are given. The first one physical contact and advances involving unwelcome and explicit sexual virtues or a demand or request for sexual favors or showing pornography against the will of a woman or making sexually colored remarks shall be guilty of the offense of sexual harassment. Now whatever offenses are conducted under clause 1, 2, 3 of subsection 1, the punishment can go up to rigorous imprisonment of 3 years or fine or both. And whatever offenses committed under the clause 4 of subsection 1, the punishment can go up to 1 year or fine or both. And the offenses here are cognizable offenses, bailable offenses, any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non-compoundable offenses. Section 354B discusses about assault or use of criminal force to women with intent to disrobe. Disrobe means asking her to remove her clothes. Now if any man who assaults or uses criminal force to any woman or abets such act with the intention of disrobing that means asking her to remove the clothes or compelling her to be naked forcing her to be naked is a punishable offenses under this particular section and the punishment here can go from minimum of three years to maximum of seven years along with fine and these are cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non-compoundable offenses 
Section 354C discusses about voyeurism. Now, what is the meaning of this particular term? It means the practice of gaining sexual pleasure from watching others when they are naked or engaged in sexual activity. Now, if anyone watches or takes the image of a picture of the woman when she is less clothed, like maybe in just underwear and bikini or maybe when she is using latrine or maybe when she is engaged in a sexual act with others. Now, taking the image of those acts and distributing them, both are offense. It is a very, very important aspect that everyone need to remember. Sometimes it so happens that they take the picture with the consent of the women, but without the consent of them, they distribute it among others. Then also it is coming under this particular section. It is considered as an offense. That is a very important part. And here for the first time committing of such offense, the punishment can go up to one year to three years of imprisonment along with fine and the subsequent that means second time and further the punishment will go up to three years to seven years along with fine now the offense here is cognizable offense bailable offense any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non-compoundable offense and when the same offense is repeated the bailable offense which i have told in the earlier case will become non-bailable one that is a very important part. So in the first time it will be bailable case whereas if it is repeated then it becomes a non-bailable one. Section 354D discusses about stalking. Now in the movies you are watching that hero is repeatedly going behind the heroine to convince her and then get married. Now we all think that it is okay. But if you are going behind a woman repeatedly even when she is not interested that is considered as stalking, which is a crime, which is an offense. We all need to know that under section 354D, if any man who follows a woman and contacts or attempt to contact such women to foster personal interaction repeatedly, despite a clear indication of disinterest by such woman. Now, she very clearly indicates that she is not at all interested. Even then, if a man repeatedly follows or try to make a contact with the women, then that is called stalking. Along with that, if anybody is monitoring the use of a mobile or any internet or any email or anything of that sort of usage, if they are trying to monitor that, that is also known as stalking. Now, except for the legal requirement, like if anybody is appointed to follow her and understand a criminal intent if there is anything related to that or if she is covered under any law of that particular land and if it is required under that or with any other reasonable justification stalking can be done otherwise it is not okay as per section 354d that is very important and what is the punishment for all those offenses conducted under section 354d if it is first time then it is imprisonment up to three years and fine and if it is repeated, that means subsequent offense or second time and furtherance, the imprisonment can go up to five years along with fine. And they are cognizable offenses, bailable offenses. Any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non-compoundable offenses. However, if the same offense is repeated, then the bailable offense becomes non-bailable offense. That is the change in the repetition of the same offense. As far as case laws are concerned, I have three important case laws here. The first one that is State of Punjab versus Major Singh. Here it was decided that modesty has nothing to do with the women's age. What is the facts? Accused tried to satisfy his unnatural lust by performing an indecent act with a sleeping child of about eight months. And he later argued in the court that the child hasn't got sexual instinct and hence, the question of modesty of women never arises. However, the Supreme Court held that a woman possesses the modesty by the moment she was born and it doesn't matter whether she was young or old or sleeping or awake. The second case law that is Rupan Diol Bajaj versus KPS Gill where it was held that no matter is trivial when modesty of women is in question. What happened here? In a party, DGP of Punjab that was KPS Gill misbehaved with an IAS officer and later he slapped on her posterior. Posterior means backside of the body. 
Now she filed an FIR, but the same got quashed, and High Court also held that it is a matter of trivial under IPC Section 95. That means act causing slight harm. So they said there is nothing to discuss on this case because it is coming under Section 95 of IPC, which discusses about an act causing slight harm. However, Supreme Court said quashing of the FIR was illegal and no matter is trivial when it is related to outraging the modesty of a woman. Hence, sexual assault is not considered as a trivial when it comes to these particular aspects. The last case law that is Rosing's case where a doctor stripped a girl with the wrong pretext of examining her body and it was held that by doing that act he has outraged the modesty of that particular woman and hence punishable. This is the last slide where we are discussing the punishment for aggravated forms of force, criminal force and assault. Starting from section 355 which discusses about assault or criminal force with intent to dishonor person otherwise than on grave provocation. If you are committing assault or criminal force to dishonor a person, in that case the punishment can go up to 2 years imprisonment or fine or both and here the offenses are non-cognizable offenses, bailable offenses, any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are compoundable offenses. They are compoundable with the consent of the person assaulted or to whom criminal force is used. That is very important. Then comes section 356 which discusses about assault or criminal force in attempt to commit theft of property carried by a person. Now if anybody is wearing something or carrying something and to commit theft if somebody is causing assault or criminal force to that person in that case the punishment can go up to 2 years or fine or both and here the offenses are cognizable offenses, bailable offenses, any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are non-compoundable offenses. Section 357 discusses about assault or criminal force in attempt wrongfully to confine a person. If to confine a person wrongfully if somebody is committing assault or criminal force in that case the punishment can go up to imprisonment of one year or fine or both and the offenses here are cognizable offenses, bailable offenses, any magistrate can conduct the trial and they are compoundable offenses in case if they get the consent from the person who got assaulted or to whom the force was used with the permission of the court. Here both are required. The consent of the person is also required and permission from the court is also required. The last section that is section 358 which discusses about assault or criminal force on grave provocation. Now while discussing grave provocation you need to remember section 352 where I have told that grave provocation should not be used as an excuse to avoid the punishment or if you are doing an act against the public servant while he doing his service that will not be considered as grave provocation or if provocation is caused by you and for private defense whatever act is done by the other if that is giving some grave provocation to you that cannot be an excuse that is all you need to remember and here the punishment can go up to simple imprisonment of one month or fine or both yeah it is simple imprisonment that is one thing you have to remember which is maximum of one month or fine or both and they are non-cognizable offenses bailable offenses any magistrate can conduct the trial there and they are compoundable offenses with the consent of the person assaulted or to whom criminal force is used. Now he has caused grave provocation so the imprisonment is maximum of one month that is simple imprisonment that is what you need to remember as far as section 358 is concerned. Two videos and we are done with force, criminal force and assault. I strongly hope that you guys are watching the videos in my playlist. Please watch them in playlist so that you get continuity. Otherwise, you might get started from the mid of a topic and you might get confused. That is my worry. Uh, thank you so much if you have already subscribed my channel. If not, this is your time to subscribe my channel. Please like, share and comment my videos. All the very best for whatsoever purpose you are watching my channel. And thanks again.